you are now locked in and listening to The Issue. This guy is a franchise quarterback, and no, I don't want to hear any pushback on that. It, it feels like a top 10 roster to me. It feels like it can win a championship. This is The Issue. Yo, what's up? We are back. It is The Issue Thursday, February 1st. It is officially the month of the Super Bowl. Um, We have a good episode here for you today. Not as long as usual. Usually we got a nice three segment hour and some change episode. Uh, Gonna be a little bit shorter today. Because, you know, what are we going to do? Predict the Pro Bowl? We, we get to talk we're not, about we're the not skills predicting the competitions? Bowl. I refuse to do um, it. So I don't even, I don't, if you asked me to pick four players that made the Pro Bowl, couldn't do it. Look, I, I literally it, have no idea. It simply has become one of the most boring weeks of in, in the Useless. NFL. Useless. Um, so, we're going to we're gonna condense here, stick to uh, the good stuff that we have to talk about. We're going to start with Tim's rant like we normally do. Uh, reviewing the conference championship weekend ton of interesting things that happened there a lot of bad decision making um, yeah i got a couple i got a couple losing sides a couple big takeaways i mean it's we'll, wild we'll, we'll have a bunch Lamar, dan campbell todd monken it's uh not good no not good a lot to discuss there we'll have hits and misses to finish out the first segment and then the second segment will end the show but uh the way we're going to do that we're going to start off with the top five biggest playoff disappointments of this season and then we're going to finish it off with a little hot take segment something new try it out on you guys uh and see how you'll like it but guys no matter how you're with us we appreciate it whether you're watching the show on youtube um, Spotify or Amazon Prime Video. You could also listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and of course the iHeartRadio app. So, guys, no matter how you're with us, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. And this is the issue. Did you get all of them in there? Are you sure? Yeah, I, I, I made like, sure. Okay, I, I went right, down the list here. I have got, them all okay, listed out on this page. Right. Yeah, all right. Anyway, um, I got I got a couple. You know, a good amount of takeaways, a couple main takeaways, and I'm going to kind of go through all of them, and we'll start in chronological order. So let's start with that Chiefs game. Let's start with the positive side first. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs, we are witnessing a dynasty. I don't think that was like a shock to anybody. I don't think anybody's like, wow, wait a minute. You think you, you think they're a dynasty? Like, no, no. Like, I think we're all pretty much aware at this point that Mahomes and Andy Reid and that that core unit in Kansas City is a dynasty, and they, they are continuing to roll. Um, and it, it's one of those... Where I don't, I think some of us are still in denial, myself included. I had the Ravens minus four and a half. You always hit on a minus four and a half. I thought the number was good. Joe Tooney was out. Ravens at home, right? I thought the number was was exactly what I wanted. Was four and a half for Baltimore. That's how you know Vegas thinks they're significantly better. But that's the least amount of points you have to swallow in in a scenario where that team is better, right? So I thought four and a half was good, and so I'm even still in denial. But when are we going to accept that Mahomes? No, no. There's there's ton of there's a ton of differences. He's still a lot younger, but is the new Brady right? You would never, in consecutive games, be like, oh, phew, Mahomes is screwed. Mahomes on the road as an underdog. He he just doesn't have what it takes. You would never say that for Tom Brady ever. So when are we going to accept that he is the new Brady in terms of he's ineffable, right? I made that joke when I when we did Justin Fields rants a while ago, right? And I every now and then I'd pick the Bears in prediction. I'd be like, oh, I'm going with the ineffable Justin Fields, best quarterback in football. It was obviously a joke. But in reality, Patrick Mahomes is that guy. You just simply can't bet against him. Tom Brady for years, right, fourth quarter, instead of a team worrying about themselves scoring, themselves getting in the end zone, it's always been about how much time is going to be left on the clock for Patrick Mahomes. Did you see Buffalo when they worried about that? Led them to being really conservative, tried to kick a field goal. Of course, mistakes happen. Tyler Bass misses. Yes, the miss was critical. But I would argue the more critical portion was them worrying about how long would be on the clock for Patrick Mahomes as opposed to just getting the damn end zone. But of course, Baltimore didn't keep it close enough down the stretch for that to matter, right? They weren't in a scenario where they had to kind of milk the clock, but kind of score. But either way, that's how you know that he's great. When you have to worry more about him than about your own shit. And that was on full display for Baltimore. So two main takeaways here. And they kind of piggyback off of one another. One. I think there's a legitimate argument, and I've defended Lamar. He wins almost 80% of his games in the regular season when he's healthy. Right? He's dynamic. He, you know, he he seems to get better each 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 year. 
Uh, the league's getting more offensive. It's getting more mobile. He is hyper mobile, yet he's still getting better from the pocket, very underrated from the pocket. But there is a legitimate argument, and I think it's fair, and I think it's valid, and I think it's probably in the majority right now. There's a serious discussion. Can Lamar Jackson win in the playoffs when he's forced to throw from the pocket? And that second point is critical. How many handoffs did they have to running backs? Six. Six handoffs to running backs on Sunday. That is ridiculous. And you might ask, well, Tim, are, are they, are they, they, might, they must not be good at running the football. That must be what it is. That must be where their advantage is at, right? They, they, the Ravens must not be good at running the football. They must have a really good aerial attack. That would be incorrect. They led the league in rushing in the regular season. And they, well, well, maybe they, maybe Kansas City just displayed a week earlier, like, hey, they're really good at stopping. No, no, they, they let up 186 yards to Buffalo. Buffalo laid out the blueprint for you. If you would have just done what Buffalo did, you could arguably do it better because you're better at running the football and have been all year than Buffalo. And so, yes, there's a legitimate argument. Lamar when forced to throw from the pocket, especially in the playoffs, because that happens more consistently in the playoffs, better defensive coordinators, you know, more situational. You have to make tough throws, third down, third and long, second and long, those type of situations. There's a legitimate argument. Can he do it? As of right now, he has not shown the ability to, so I'll answer no. But another thing can also be true. He was set up to fail by Todd Monk, and the game plan was absolutely abysmal. How can you have six handoffs to running backs? Two to Zay Flowers. So that's what, eight right there combined? Lamar led your team in carries with eight carries. He had just as many carries as everybody else on your team combined. You dropped him back 46 times. And you're like, well, maybe the game was out of reach. No, the largest spread was 10. Did you see San Francisco down 21, or I'm sorry, 17, continue to run the football? Because they had a plan. They stuck to the game plan. They stayed balanced. They said, hey, let's not panic here like we're 11. And let's just stay with our game plan. Let's stay within the confines of this game. Let's run the football. Let's control the line of scrimmage. And let's get back to what we know. Baltimore said, nah, screw what we know. <laughs> throw, throw the game plan out. Lamar, go figure it out, buddy. Go figure it out. And I and let's to be fair, I don't think he played well. right? So like, even if your coaches say, hey, figure it out, I still expected a better performance from the league MVP. But he was set up to fail by his own coaching staff, whether he knows it, whether they know it, whether the Ravens fans know it or not. Those are my takeaways from that game. Let's go ahead and transition real quick into that Lions 49ers game because I think there's less overarching takeaways. The Niners are a better football team. They're a more veteran football team, um, better coach. Quarterback's a wash for me. I think Jared Goff throws a better ball, but Brock Purdy's a little bit better off script, can move around a little bit better. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is the better overall running back, but overall running game, I would give it to the Lions. So that's a wash. Weapons are both good. Again, all of it, though the Niners have more experience, right? It's young left tackle in Detroit. In San Francisco, it's old left tackle that's seen everything. It's young weapons, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Sam Laporta. In San Fran, it's Brandon Ayuk, who's been around for a while, George Kittle and Debo Samuel. These guys have been around the block. It's it's Kyle Shanahan, who's been in big games, been in Super Bowls. On the other side, it's Dan Campbell, who, if you remember correctly, went for it on a two-point conversion from the seven-yard line. Say it out loud, it sounds like Madden, Right? The Lions, and this is, I'll take the, the, the phrase from, from Colin Coward, they need manalytics, right? It's analytics, but you have to factor in the situation that you're, that you're in currently. Analytics are great over the course of a 17, 18-game season, right? 18-week, 17-game. I like them in, in baseball over the course of 162 games. When it's game seven and I have my dog on the mound, I'm sorry, I don't give a damn if the lefty reliever with a 4-5 or five ERA technically has a better whip against this type of batter profile. I don't give a shit. I'm, t- I'm rolling with Justin Verlander if that's my guy on the mound right now, and he's twirling a gem. I'm sorry, I don't want Mr. Lefty that just got, got called up from AAA because he's pretty good against lefty-lefty matchups. Right? I don't care that the analytics said, hey, let's go for it on fourth and two. You could go up by three scores in the fourth quarter of the NFC Championship game. Or I'm sorry, the third quarter of the NFC Championship game. What are you doing? What are you doing? You do that all day. And in the fourth quarter, you can tie the game with under 10 to go in the NFC Championship game. Those are no-brainer decisions. Those aren't even close. Because what do the Niners do? What did they do all second half? They ran the football. They controlled the clock. They put you on the ropes. 
So if you give them the lead, they're just going to run the ball, run the clock out. You've shown no ability to stop them. If you tie, now they have to change up their game plan a little bit. Now they might have to throw the ball. Now when it's third and six, they get, they get a little tight. they got to throw the ball downfield a little bit. It's a completely different decision. Dan Campbell fumbled that choice. The Lions need analytics. They needed analytics with a little bit of thought in there, with a little bit of, hey, let's not just go with the numbers. I understand he did what got him there. But if you think, what consistently wins in the NFL? Find me the dynasty. Find me even half of a dynasty. Find me even a quarter of a dynasty where the primary thing that wins is aggressiveness. Andy Reid goes for it on fourth down. But that's not the primary thing that wins. It's Andy Reid's creativity, and, and Spags is a great DC, and Mahomes is a really good quarterback, and you have the best tight end that's ever lived. And then it's Andy's aggressiveness. That's like fifth, sixth on the list. It's never been like, hey, we have this coach who plays like there's a flaming board in his ass. That's how he coaches games. That, and that's why we win. That's never been why anybody wins. It's always been... Star quarterback, good defense, good weapons. Maybe fourth, fifth, sixth down the list. It's like, hey, we're pretty aggressive, and that's our that's our motto. We're going to stick to that. That's not your number one. That's not your fastball. Right? That's your circle change. That's your splitty that splits away from lefties. Right? I just didn't understand the moves. And he defended it. I understand it's your identity. Sometimes you have to pivot off your identity given the situation. I didn't like the moves from Detroit, but I do think we have the two best teams in the Super Bowl, and I'm excited to watch. Um, yeah, I, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm kind of really upset with how the, the weekend turned out. My what, what I wanted to see in the Super Bowl more than anything would have been Ravens-Lions. I think that would have been fantastic. Um, we've seen this Super Bowl before. Simply, We've seen the Chiefs and the 49ers. Literally within the last three years, um, we got to watch a, a Jimmy Garoppolo get rolled out there versus a Patrick Mahomes. I like, think it's going to be a good Super Bowl, like, though. We know how it's going to go. It's going to be tight. And Mahomes is going to win it late. And Mahomes is going to win the fourth quarter. Did you see a lot of people it's, saying, like, this would have been the worst season in NFL history? That's such a bogus idea. That's stupid. That's dumb. I just hate how it came out to the same outcome. Like, I, I would have loved to see the Lions. I, I was really pulling for them, too, and it sucked to see – uh, just kind of how they imploded on themselves. I, I did not think of Dan Campbell as like the Brandon Staley type, where you know you're gonna take uncalculated risks and shoot yourself in the foot. If he was paying attention, that's how the coach lost a job this year. Yeah, no, I would agree. have you. By the way, I was this close to my prediction of Taylor Swift, Eminem. They had to replace Usher. They would have had to. Yeah. Could you imagine? I would have rather that than this. Well, yeah, of course. That's all right. It is what it is. I don't know. Again, I think we have the two best teams. I'm excited to watch. Either way. Um, let's get into hits and misses. We have uh, some good ones to go over this week. All right, hit number one here. This is the Super Bowl I had predicted. I am like 99.9% .9 sure I said Niners. I know that I called Chiefs because I remember saying, I'm so sick and tired of doubting Patrick Mahomes. Yet here I am, one week removed from betting the Ravens minus four and a half. What am I doing? But preseason Tim was smart. He was like, hey, man. Why are, you, why are you messing around being like, ooh, let me take the hot, trendy team. Let me take the Bills. No. No. Go with what you know works. Until Patrick Mahomes shows me that he's not the greatest quarterback in the history of the league, then I, I, I'm i going to stop doubting. Yeah. It's, uh, I think you definitely hit it on the head. Um, you said that the 49ers would come out of the NFC. I'm almost positive because I, I liked the Niners last year. I liked the Niners the year before. Like, I've liked the Niners now for a couple years in terms of their talent. You know, to come out of the NFC. So, yeah, yeah look, Chiefs Niners. Look, again, I is it maybe the most interesting? It. You don't like T-Swift. You don't like, you know, Travis Kelsey, all that. But but let's be real here. These are the two best teams. We have the best coach, best quarterback I think outside on one side. Of, I think outside of this last week, I think Baltimore's better. Awful they didn't take. play, I can't they, they didn't that. play like, it, like... I can't unsee that the, the abysmalness. Of that game. I can't unsee the abysmalness of the entire Kansas City season. Doesn't matter. When it matters most, when the lights are brightest. Patrick Mahomes is ineffable. Yep. Okay, so best coach, best quarterback on one side, best overall roster on the other. Roster on the other. Yeah. I don't know. I love it. I, I, I don't know. Mr. Moan here, I may have called the Chiefs, but uh, in terms of bets, 0-4, we're wearing the golden sombrero here on a fine, fine Thursday. Not good. No. Not ideal. Okay, let me walk you through it. First of all, <laughs> four and a half, ask any professional better. You always smack minus four and a half. It's literally understood. If you're betting plus four and a half, you are a, like, you're a total square. Like, period. End of story. 
It's so sharp to bet minus four and a half, period. So I'm on the right side. It just Baltimore shit the bet, literally. Uh, I had Mark Andrews anytime touchdown. I have never seen a worse game plan in my life. My thinking was, hey, if you're a kid, you get grounded, your PlayStation's taken away. You get the PlayStation back. Are you letting it sit there for a week? No. No, you're playing that shit first day. First day you're on that 12 hours, right? Lamar gets Mark Andrews back. He had, what, three targets, two catches? That's ridiculous. Are we are we actually being for real right now? One of the one of their best reliable targets, especially yeah. when, it, when you need it the most in the red zone. And you have a big body. He always catches the ball. You never have to worry with Mark Andrews. Yeah. Then I had then I had San Fran minus seven and a half. First fall, late cover by Detroit is what it is. All right, I was on the right side of that. And then I had Brock Purdy over 277. Um, he had 267, so off by 10 yards. I'll swallow that. Whatever. 0-4, oh doesn't matter. I'm moving on. Hit number two here. Harbaugh is in as the Chargers head coach. We called that in our head coaching carousel. We didn't talk about it quite enough, but... Uh, I think it's a great hire. I think the Chargers had to make that hire. For Justin Herbert, if you want any chance of Herbert being a high-level quarterback, a Super Bowl-level quarterback, because I think he has the talent to, but it has not translated because roster, because of culture, because of, you know, Brandon Staley, this, that, the other thing, Harbaugh gives you your best chance for that franchise to do anything significant. Yeah, that that is the best hire, and I think it's going to Look, I'm like, very evident that he's the right guy. Yeah. I think when you can say, who's the second best coach on the market, I would say Vrabel. And you say, what if the Chargers hired Vrabel? It still, it would not feel like a success to me. It'd feel good. It'd feel like an upgrade. But it just would not feel like, hey, they got the guy. Yeah. Like, in a normal year, you're like, okay, number one candidate, Ben Johnson. Number two is Kellen Moore. Is there that much of a difference? Eh, maybe. But it's like, Harbaugh here. And then, like, seven feet of shit, and then everybody else. Yeah. Everybody else at the bottom. So, like, he was clearing away the best hire. Yep. Mr. number two here, I thought Kellen Moore would be an absolute stud. Weird segue there. I didn't actually mean to do that. <laughs> but I thought he would be an absolute stud. He's now on his third team in three years, right? He was with the Cowboys, and he goes to the to the Chargers. Now he's been hired as Philadelphia's offensive coordinator with uh, Nick Sirianni. Vic Fangio will be the D.C. I don't know, man. I mean, we'll see. I just... From him being one of the top candidates in terms of many people's eyes for a head coaching gig after that that run in in Dallas, to now like on his third team in three years, like it just doesn't feel around, yeah though. bouncing around does not feel right. Yeah, that does, that generally does not happen with the uh, with the coordinator or the coach in general that that knows what they're doing right. and that people have trust and faith in. Normally, not bouncing around from team to team. It's one of those Jim's going to bring in his own guy, so it just there there was no room for Kellen, but whatever. We'll see how he does in Philly. Hit number three here. Uh, Bill Belichick is just not a good coach. Period. I said it. I said it. What two years ago? I said build the, build the dude a statue. Statue. Move on. Now, I mean, they hired Bill Belichick Jr. and Gerard Mayo. Didn't love the hire, but the market. And I said this with Lamar when he was a free agent. The market will dictate what you're worth. Who's lining up for Bill Belichick? No Approximately one. zero people. Yeah. Atlanta picked Raheem Morris. I'm not saying he's a bad coach, but it's like if. The name itself, you'd be like, oh, Bill Belichick over Raheem Morris all day long. How do you think that interview went? You know what I mean? Like, he walks in there in Atlanta, Arthur Blank, GM, and everybody's sitting there. How do you think that interview went, Raheem Morris versus Bill Belichick? I'm sure Raheem Morris was very open, very, you know, outgoing, energetic. And Bill was probably like, well, I won six, seven, 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 six Super Bowls. Yeah, he's probably just, you see that Brady guy? Pretty good. Yeah, it's like, uh, the, the defenses I had. He's so probably- it's like... He's not collaborative. He's not new. He's not energetic. He's not interesting. He's not a good football coach yeah. in 2023 period. End of story. When when Raheem shows up to the interview, full suit, decked out, and Bill rolls in in a three-quarter length hoodie. Dude, could you imagine if he showed up to an interview like that? I doubt he did, but could you imagine? Is it old Patriots hoodie, too? so funny. Old, of course. Old rag. Holes in it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cut off here at the, uh, the nag. Yeah. Uh, Miss three here. I don't understand... Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator for Detroit, getting head coaching interviews. I mean, did we miss something? <laughs> like, I I just don't understand it. He had head coaching interviews as soon as the uh, regular season ended, and he's going to get more now that they're done and they're eliminated. I, and he's a defensive coach. Defensive coach and an awful defense. It wasn't good. Abysmal. Their secondary is atrocious. Their pass rush is mediocre at best. Their linebackers are improving but still not good. I, like we must have missed some. I don't get it. I don't. I don't view that as a good hire. If anybody makes that hire, I, I couldn't even believe that people were 
taking that seriously. I thought that was a That's joke. That's like, and I think Dan Quinn obviously has a better body of work. They were better for the regular season, but after seeing Jordan Love torch it, I just don't feel the same about that that hire anymore. No. It's like if he were to get hired in Seattle, has been the one he's rumored to go to because he was there with Pete Carroll uh, for a couple years. But after seeing that, it's like, I can't unsee. Look, I could see a bad game. That's fine. That's fine. I can forget that, right? I can't unsee if you're Aaron Glenn, a full body of work of shit. And I can't see if you're Dan Quinn getting lit up by a rookie quarterback in the playoffs at home. I can't unsee that. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just, that's a big factor for me. That's it for hits and misses. Let's go ahead and transition into a break. When we come out of the break, uh, we'll have our top five playoff disappointments from just this year, not all time, from just this year. It could be a player. It could be a team. could be a side of the football. could be a coordinator. It could be anybody, any team, anything uh, from the 2023-2024 NFL playoffs. And then we'll each have three hot takes. Could be going into the draft. Could be, you know, wrapping up from the season. Could be going into the Super Bowl. Could be a Pro Bowl or All Pro. Doesn't matter. Could be any of that. Hot takes from the year so guys you're not going to want to miss it welcome back and i am fired up i'll tell you that i am fired up this top five disappointing list i you know what i do like to praise you know guys that play well but i man i love shit on people it's fun yeah that's the fun of it Uh, and then of course we'll have some hot takes we're gonna have two each around the bend i'll have two you'll have two we'll go back and forth we'll kind of debate that what's more realistic what's not realistic and kind of go over hot takes, and we'll kind of see where, you know, those are, that's four right there, either hits or misses. That's that's content right there, I'll tell you what. It is. It really is. Uh, however you're here, however you're listening, watching YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Prime Music, etc., etc., cetera, and etc., cetera, ton of places. <laughs> Come on, that was great. Et cetera, and et cetera. Was that, was that what, Key and Peel right yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, it's been a while. Anyway. <laughs> Um, however you are here and however you are listening, watching, and consuming our content, we certainly appreciate it. I can't get over that. That's all right. That's all right. You know, we don't have a third segment today, so it's got to go off the rails a little earlier. That's true. Usually the third segment goes off the rails, but it's just whatever the last segment is, and this is the last segment, so it's going off the rails. I decided, hey, we're going off the rails. And this list, we are going to really push it. So let's go ahead. Without further ado, this is the 2023-2024 playoffs, uh, the most disappointing people, five through one. Let's start at number five. Let's go with the Peoples, the the Associated Press, PFF, the Consensus Depoys. That's right. I'm talking to Miles Garrett. I'm talking to Micah Parsons, who absolutely decided to not show up for their games. I was going to say, where were you at? Where were you at? Zero pressures. They had the exact same amount of pressures as TJ Watt. TJ Watt didn't freaking play. Didn't play. Take it away. When you're supposed to be top of the league, when you are the main reason, uh, and plus, when you get the amount of praise that a Miles Garrett does, and then you get into the playoffs and you can't do anything, you can't do anything. There was no, That's the difference, and that's what pisses me off, is when people look at the Miles Garrett-TJ Watt comparison. And he has and zero stat categories he's better in. He has zero stat categories, but... TJ Watt actively wins football games. If the, he changes the game almost every single time he plays, like we always say, when the lights are the brightest, when it matters the most, can you do it? Miles Garrett did not. Micah Parsons has led the league in sacks the first like month or two of the season. His his two years in the league, he disappears at the end of the season. Disappears. Awful in the playoffs. Miles Garrett was abysmal. But if you look at PFF, oh, he had a 96 uh, pass rushing grade. That's weird. He had zero freaking pressures. He didn't show up to the field. Number four, it's kind of piggybacking off that Micah Parsons thing. The Cowboys in general. The Cowboys, I mean, Dak was abysmal. McCarthy was bad. Dan Campbell, or not Dan Campbell, uh, Dan Quinn and that defense were awful. The secondary was bad. Tony Pollard's not a one. C.D. Lamb looked invisible. From top to bottom, That Cowboys team looked like frauds. They didn't look any better than the Washington freaking Commanders that Sunday. It was bad. Um, Or was that a Monday? No, that was Sunday. It was a Sunday. Wait. No, it was a Sunday. You sure? Yes. I'd be willing to bet a lot of money. No, you're right. It was a Sunday. It was the Sunday 4-30 game. Yeah. um, It was uh, surprising, but, you know, it's Dallas, so not all that surprising. See, that's the thing. We would not be surprised any other year. We finally started to just an inch buy in a little bit. Okay, Dak's now playing like he should 
you know, Dak's playing like his paycheck dictates he should play. The McCarthy isn't over his head. CD Lamb was good. Yes, like the defense, defense was looked awesome. good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, number three here, Dan Campbell. Um, look, I think there's a lot to be said. The Lions haven't won a playoff game in what 30 years, and they won two playoff games. For that, he should be applauded. For that, he should be commended. But to be in a position to win that football game and absolutely have human fecal matter run down your leg into your sock on national television cannot be ignored. Cannot be ignored. The absolute choke job that I witnessed from the Detroit Lions, and again, why are we surprised it's Detroit? Detroit's going to Detroit. But to be up 17, to have the opportunity to make it a three-score game late in the third quarter, to have an opportunity to tie it late in the fourth quarter, and for you to blow every one of those opportunities and do it in total Detroit fashion is disheartening to say the least, and he deserves to be clowned for it. Yeah, um, and, and just to put it into perspective of how bad the, the coaching job was, you have, okay, you have the game, I don't want to say locked up because it's the 49ers, but it was noticeable enough where during the game, I was at a bar, okay? The girl that walks past goes, I don't understand why people are interested in football. I mean, I'm watching this right now, and I shit you not, this is what she said. I mean, like, obviously the blue team is going to win. Why is everybody and even you'd watching be right. anymore? And the, should that have happened? Yes, 100%. Somebody that obviously has never watched a game of football in their life walks past and goes, this should be over. And it wasn't. He let them climb back in, and then when he had the opportunity to finally put it away for the second time, you didn't do it. And, and it's because of coaching decisions. It's because of bad, poor miscalculation of risk. I couldn't agree more. Number two are the Philadelphia Eagles. They flat out quit. It was an embarrassment to the sport of football. It wasn't just an embarrassment to the owner, just an embarrassment to that city, just an embarrassment to themselves. It was a disrespect to the sport of football to see them go out and play with utter indifference, with a lack of just giving a shit about the sport, Didn't about care. their well-being, about the, the success of the team, about the success of the franchise, about the passion of the fan base. They took a shit on all of it. They did not care whatsoever. The Philadelphia Eagles should be embarrassed from that effort. From and I know people don't remember it because we get amnesia in the playoffs. Even us, we're making this list. We're like, well, wait, 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 this guy's number one. Jimmy Campbell's got to be two. It's like, well, wait, wait, let's think about the scope of the playoffs. We, we almost forgot about the Cowboys with fecal matter running down their leg. We almost forgot that the Browns got whomped by 30. We almost forgot that the Eagles completely quit on the season. No, no, no. We will not forget. That was an embarrassment. Sirianni should have been fired. The entire staff should have been run out, which basically they were, except for Sirianni. There should be nobody left standing in terms of leadership from that team. Plus, this is one of the teams where you can look at and say it wasn't just a playoff problem. These were problems down the stretch. The last four, five, six weeks of the regular season, you could see the wheels falling off the bus. Uh, somebody forgot to screw the lug nuts back on. They lost, what, six uh, to seven on the stretch, I think, yeah? Yes. Seven of eight, six to seven, something. It, I it kinda, think it was seven of eight. It was horrendous. You know what kind of cracked me up, though, is people are like, we've never seen anything like that. And I'm like, clearly you didn't follow the 2020 Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> who went 11-0. and 0. And then, again, fecal matter down the leg. Yeah. Snap over the head. That was that season where they went 11-0, and 0, and then I think they no, lost like 7 of 8 down the stretch lost, or 6 of 7 yeah, down the stretch. Lost all the engines, had to just go into a complete downward spiral of a nosedive. Yeah, yeah so clearly people weren't paying attention then. Yeah. Uh, number one, Lamar Jackson. I'm sorry, I and I've been a defender, but – Oh, I'm sorry, did I say Lam oh, oh, Lamar Harden, my bad. Oh, come on now. It's James Harden in quarterback form. Is going to be dynamic in the regular season. Is going to put up points. Is going to get accolades. Is going to get MVP votes. But when push comes to shove, when big boy football starts, Lamar Jackson does not have what it takes. He will not win a Super Bowl. You want to talk about a hot take? Maybe there's an early one. He's not built for the playoffs. He's going to be James Harden, Russell Westbrook. He will not be successful in the playoffs any more than he's already been. He He's won, what, two playoff games? He'll continue. He's won two of his last, or two of his only, like, I think five or six playoff games. He will continue at that percentage. He will not make a run. Lamar Jackson, the number one most disappointing player. And it sucks, too. Or thing, or team, yeah, or whatever. I agree. But it sucks because he's so special. He does... He's a likable he, guy, too. I want to throw that out there. He is. He just does so many things that, like, nobody else does. It's fun to watch him play the game. When he's on, the Ravens are probably, 
I would say top three most fun teams to watch, most interesting teams to watch, and I would love him to be successful. But I agree with you. I think you said it before he the camera started win. rolling. Would you say about how like running quarterbacks? Yeah. Did, we, did you say it on? I did. Was that I, on air? Or was that no? With the that, that was off? before we started. You can look at it and, and and with how special he is and and everything that goes into that that makes Lamar Lamar. You can take that. Yes, he's truly one of a kind. But let's look back on it, and I'm gonna say it again. When has a running quarterback ever worked in the NFL? Like, when have they ever been so successful that they've won even a championship? Yeah, people that say, it oh, doesn't well, like, work. well, like Mahomes runs. No, no, no. Mahomes is not a dual threat no. quarterback. And then people are like, well, Lamar can still pass, in, pass from the pocket. Not, not like to Mahomes. the level that he needs to not be. Not like Mahomes. Yeah. Now, could he? Maybe. But not yet. I don't know. I, I, I hope he figures it out. Should we run back through it? Yeah. Number one, Lamar Jackson. Number two, the entire Eagles, you know, dignity. <laughs> number three, Dan Campbell. Number four, the Cowboys. And number five, the Depoys, the defensive player of the years, Micah Parsons and Miles Garrett, who decided um, to stand in solidarity with T.J. Watt and absolutely put up zero stats because T.J. Watt couldn't play, and they may have been better off not playing. You know, that was nice of them to do that, too. It was nice. Yeah. It was a very respectful move for them to say, you know what, since T.J. can't play, we're going to stand in solidarity and absolutely um, you know, piss down our leg instead of you know, yeah. instead of putting up stats. When the absolute best player get our at the position in. can't play, yeah. you know, you, you got sometimes you got to take a step back. Yeah, you know. they said, hey, since TJ's probably in the facility getting some cardio on the bike or whatever, you know, low impact for the knee, maybe like, we, we should we just go get too. cardio. Yeah, we'll just put on the yeah. pads and go get cardio out yeah. there. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into hot takes. Yeah, I'm all right, so for this one. it's two each. We'll go back and forth. I'll give one. He'll give one. I'll give one. He'll give one. Uh, and it'll be hot takes either coming off of last season, going into the next couple years, going into next season period. NFL draft stuff could be really anything in the football or sports world in general. I think all of ours are football, though. Yes. Um, and we're just going to kind of discuss it and debate it. You want me to start here? Yeah, why not? Okay, I'm going to start with my, I would say, less hot take. They're both pretty steamy. Number one, Caleb Williams will be a top seven quarterback next season. So let me let me explain this. I think top he's gonna seven. Okay, so so I think he walks in as a no as a top three improvisational quarterback, like a Mahomes, Josh Allen style, making plays off schedule, throwing off platform. I think we see the importance of that in the NFL. I think he's top three in that. I think he walks in as a top ten pocket passer in football. Yes, is he gonna have to adjust to the defenses and the schemes he sees? Yes. But from a pure talent standpoint, standing in the pocket and delivering an accurate strike, I think he walks in as a top 10 quarterback there. Do I think he's a running quarterback? No. But do I think he's a top 10 mobile, able to move, pick up first downs with his legs quarterback? I do think he walks in as a top 10 quarterback in that regard as well. And I think, let's be real here, and I don't, I, I've had my misgivings about Chicago. I do think he walks into a situation that isn't completely barren and it isn't completely hopeless. They have two first round picks, which means they can take him one and go get him a weapon with the other first round pick. Then go get him another left tackle. Then go get him a, a tight end, whatever the case may be. He has DJ Moore. He has Cole Kmet. They have a decent run game. The offensive line's been better. They have a new offensive coordinator, and I, you know, I think he'll be okay in Shane Waldron. Um, so I don't think it's a situation completely barren. He's in the weaker NFC. The schedule will be a you know, third-place schedule. I think there's a lot of room for progression here, and I think he's going to be a top-seven quarterback next season. And even if he's not, I think he's going to be somebody that without a doubt you would never take a phone call on for the first 10 years of his career. Well, it's a hot take. Um, look, I, I think it could be interesting. When you have that much talent, especially as a thrower of football, I mean, does anybody has anybody in college football in the last? I don't know. I think he walks in with a top five arm. Does he not? No, I, I think he does. Has anybody in college football in the last five to ten years thrown a better ball than him? Outside of maybe, um, maybe Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I would say Trevor was a very easy thrower. Joe probably was slightly more accurate. Like Joe, Joe had that Joe cool accuracy. But yeah, no, I think overall arm talent. I think he's been the best quarterback probably since Andrew Luck, maybe. Trevor Lawrence, that that, that vicinity, that that yeah. range of player. I'd put him, I'd put him right up there in that category with them. I think it's going to be wildly interesting. Let's to, hear your hot or your uh, your hot take. Okay, we're going to start off with this one. Jim Harbaugh will have the Chargers in the AFC Championship game next season. See, I'll tell you what, I don't hate it at all. I think it's a, I think it's a roster ready to turn around and look at, look, look, he's won everywhere and quickly. Yeah. Explain your hot take. So. 
that's yeah. my that's my thought on it. You but. have Justin Herbert, right? And that's the biggest piece of them all. The team is built to win. You've been plagued by a horrific head coach the last what three years? Was it three years? Mm, yeah. You can't. It, you can't put all the blame on Justin Herbert for the lack of a game plan, for uh, the horrible decision making. You're gonna get a grown up like Jim in the room. Everybody respects Jim. Everybody knows what he was able to do at the NFL level when he was coaching the 49ers. Like, there's no confusion there. And you have one of the best quarterback talents, and he is young, and you have weapons, and the offensive line is getting better, and you show that you could kind of run the football this year. So he's going to get in. He's going to bring his guys in. He's going to get a draft under his belt. I think he's going to – this team is going to be one of the ones where – People are going to look at them preseason and go, okay, like maybe like 10 and 7, 9 and 8. Yeah. But I think, I they're, think gonna they're, be... they're probably going to be more around 12, 13 wins. Ooh. And they're going to come to the playoffs. That's, that's spicy. They're going to run through it. They will be in the AFC Championship game and they will beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, let me kind of piggyback off because I, I actually really like to take. If you think about his own division, we, we view the AFC West as this like loaded division. The Raiders don't have a quarterback. Nope. I like Sean Payton, but they don't have a quarterback. I mean, you could tell me Russ, but I don't believe that. Nope. I mean, we, we would expect, again, who knows, and I'm never going to doubt Mahomes, but like two straight Super Bowls, do they take a dip? I think it's definitely possible. They, they could. Look around the AFC. Do we think Buffalo takes a dip? Well, yeah, Stephon Diggs is probably gone. Von Miller, they have to rework that contract, right? They have some aging guys. They're going to have to rebuild some spots of the roster. Could they take a step back? Absolutely. Um, we, we know Aaron with the Jets isn't a real threat. Uh, Jacksonville is seemingly in shambles all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Anthony Richardson's too young. C.J. Stroud's probably still a tick too young with that roster. Uh, Joe Burrow can't stay healthy for a season. We would expect the Ravens to take a slight step back. So it's like, I think the door's more open than you would think. Yeah, I yeah. agree. All right, what's your My worst? second would be San Francisco is going to miss the playoffs next season. I think Completely they're going to have to rebuild some parts of this roster. I think there's a real chance if they win, I think Trent Williams will retire. I think there's a real argument George Kittle thinks about it. I think Christian McCaffrey thinks about it. I think you'd be surprised how close guys are to retirement at that seven, eight, nine years spot where a lot of these guys are. Even if those guys stay, the defense is going to need rebuilt. The defensive line is not very good. Those linebackers are aging. How long are they going to you know, be able to produce at that level? They have, I want to say, seven starters that are going to be free agents at the end of this year. By the way, back to the Kansas City argument. They have, I think, eight or nine starters that are going to be free agents, and they don't have a ton of cap space. Now, granted, the Niners do because Brock Purdy's making nothing, but you're going to have to discuss, if he wins, there are going to be real discussions on if we pay this guy $40 million a year. They're, you're going to hear it. Yeah. You think I'm crazy? If he wins the Super Bowl, even if he doesn't, you're going to hear real discussions. Do we pay Brock Purdy big boy money? Once you do, dude, you have to start rebuilding that roster. I think there's a legitimate argument San Fran takes a large step back and misses the playoffs in 2024-2025 season. Think about when they went to the Super Bowl last time. They took a step back. Now, granted, partially because Garoppolo got hurt, but same idea. Yeah. I think they take a step back. I think they missed the playoffs. That is interesting. I like that one. I hate the 49ers, so I like that one a lot. Spicy take, yeah. for sure. Again, these are hot takes, guys. People are like, that's stupid. Well, it's like, well, I mean, that's that's kind of what the segment is. Like, yeah. It's we, kind of throwing shit at the wall and hoping it sticks. I, like, mean, I think we could come on here and go, I think Joe Burrow's going to – I think he's going to bounce back from this injury. I think he's going to have a really good year next yeah, year. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to look good. That's not a hot take. Like, these are supposed to be kind of outlandish. Yeah. Like, you know, I think the Steelers are going to still have odds. zero idea what they're doing at the, at the quarterback position. Yeah, no shit. Probably, yeah. right? What's your uh, second and final hot take here for the segment? Uh, okay, so I have the Bills will not win a Super Bowl, or hell, I don't even have them making it to a Super Bowl in the next five seasons. Now, I mean... I like your other take. I think your other take is more realistic because I think whenever you have Josh Allen, the window is never completely closed. Like you're kind of closing it, but um, I think it's closed. But I I don't like. I think I think it's a, a very overrated roster. I think it's an overrated coaching staff, and I think it's elevated a lot by Josh Allen's play. So I think it's I think it's a fair point. How long can he play like that though? How long can you carry a team solely on your back? How long? How many games do you have to lose? How many divisional rounds do you have to not make it through? How many AFC championship games do you have to lose to Patrick Mahomes? Like, how many times does this have to happen? And, like, what are you going to change? Like, what are you going to do? He's already making a lot of money. Josh Allen's making a lot of money. You're not going to go pay anybody. You're not going to go make a big signing. On top of it, who's the... 
when is the AFC going to get any easier? Now you have Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers to worry about. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we we would expect the Dolphins to go nowhere with that head coach. I look. I think I don't think the Jets are a real contender, but they're going to be better with Aaron. Hell, we would suppose the, that Gerard Mayo would get New England at least serviceable. And then the Bills were a make a wish team this year, and you know it, and everybody else knows it. Yeah, they barely skated into the playoffs. They got Pittsburgh in the first round, which was a blessing for them. Beat Pittsburgh, moved on, waxed by Kansas City. Happens every year. I don't. They're not making it to a Super Bowl. Five years. Interesting. I don't. I don't hate the take at all. I'll tell you that right now, guys. That was hot takes. I'll tell you what we that had. Some, those like were spite. I think we might have to make that. We'll see how the you know how the how the people like it. But yeah. I think uh, that was one of my favorite segments that we've done, especially at least one of the new segments that we've done. That's pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, always innovating here on the show. I gotta Absolutely say. innovation that excites Nissan. Is that Nissan? Toyota? No, no, Nissan? No. Yeah, it's no. definitely Nissan. No. It's uh, innovation that excites. No, that's not Nissan. I bet you. 50 bucks right now. It's Nissan. I, okay. It's not Nissan. Go ahead. <laughs> it's Audi. It's not Audi. Oh my God, it's Nissan. No, it is not. There's no shot. Dogged on. Absolutely dogged on. This segment has gone off the rails. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, YouTube, Spotify, all that. Make sure you check out the website. Check out TikTok. Look at SoBet. We had a rough week this week, but overall for the playoffs and for the season, we are above that 56% sharp line. So go ahead and check out our bets there. Code, the issue, links, and everything are pretty much anywhere you can find the show. You can find links uh, to get to any of our other platforms. We really, really, really Appreciate you guys tuning in to a shorter yet always amazing and always interesting The Issue.